All right, so I want to talk about the Leaping Ma uh, uh, division models. Um, so, it, it, and actually, it's been a, a little while since I've read the article, but basically, it, it's pretty sad that, um, you know, they asked the American elementary school teachers to write a, a math problem that required them to do, you know, some kind of fraction division in order to solve it and most of the teachers failed I think there were I think there were like three who did it correctly uh, out of I, I forget how many but it, it was pretty pretty uh, bad results whereas the Chinese teachers were were able to do it much more successfully so anyway um, but the the idea you, you should have read that uh, that portion of the article that I sent to you and the idea is that uh, there were three main types of questions that the Chinese teachers uh, would write. And, and uh, in the article, they called them the measurement model, the partitive model, and the uh, factors and products model, or the area model. Um, and so uh, here's what each of those things are asking. So in the measurement model, so, so just using something like 12 divided by 3 as an example, uh, in the measurement model, the, the question you're asking yourself is how many threes are in 12, right? Or how many times does three go into 12, right? How many threes are in 12? That's the question that you're asking if you're working with the measurement model. If you're working with the partitive model, then the question you're asking is a little bit different. You're asking three groups of what number is 12? In other words, three of what number is 12, right? So that's the partitive model. And then the area model is very similar to the partitive model. In fact, um, there, there's really not much of a difference between the area and the partitive models, uh, except for something that I'll show you here in a second. But, but the area model is basically asking the same thing. It's saying 3 times what equals 12. Okay, so, uh, so those are the three types of models that the, uh, that the article mentions. And before I go any further, let me just say that if you were ever tasked <laughs> with that kind of problem where there's, where somebody just comes up to you and says something like, you know, write a problem to describe, you know, one half divided by five sixths or something like that, and you're just kind of freaking out, here's a trick. Replace them with whole numbers. Replace the one half and the five sixths with whole numbers and th see if you can write a, a problem to describe 12 divided by three. And if you can do that, then you should be able to go back and just replace the 12 and the 3 with the 1 sixth and the f or 1 half and the 5 sixths or whatever it was that I said, right? Um, so, uh, so don't let the fractions sort of fool you. Uh, your intuition that, that you have with whole numbers still applies to fractions uh, when it comes to, you know, writing division problems and multiplication problems and things like that. Um, and in fact, in, in your homework tonight, I'm going to have you practice writing down word problems for each of the different operations. Um, anyway, so uh, so this is the measurement, partitive, and area model. Basically, it's really just the measurement and partitive model is what, what this boils down to. And, and they're just two different ways of looking at division. The measurement model is when you're asking yourself, how many of this number fit into this number? The partitive model is when you're asking yourself, what times this number equals this number? Okay, so that's really, that's, that's the difference. So what I want to do is give you a couple examples of each of these types of models using uh, the division problem 1 and 1 6 divided by 1 third. And you could copy down this chart too if you, if you felt like it. Um, anyway, so the measurement model, when you see 1 and 1 6 divided by 1 third, the measurement model asks how many 1 thirds fit into 1 and 1 sixth? Right, like how many, how many, yeah, how many times does 1 and 1 third or sorry, how many times does one third go into one and one sixth? How many one thirds are in one and one sixth? So an example of that would be something like this: If a tennis ball weighs one third pound, one uh, a third of a pound, I guess. How many tennis balls weigh one and one sixth pounds? Okay. Because in order to answer that question, you have to think how many thirds will fit into one and one sixth, right? How many third pound tennis balls will it make uh, will it make or will it take uh, to make one and one sixth pounds right okay so that's one here's another one 
uh, one lap is one third of a mile. How many laps are needed to cover a distance of one and one sixth miles? You know, this is a really clear problem, at least to me. I, I don't know why, but, but th this one is, is even more clear than the tennis ball problem because I'm thinking of a lap. Okay, so a lap is one third mile. So obviously if I go around three times, I've run one mile, right? But if I want to run one and one sixth miles, then that means I need, need to do an extra half a lap in order to get that one sixth in. So I need to go uh, three and a half. I need to go three and a half laps, right? Anyway, but this is one and one sixth divided by one third. We're asking ourselves how many one third, how many one third laps fit into one and one sixth. Um, the acre problem, right? The the you have ten acres of land. One lot is two ninths of an acre. How many lots are on your ten acres, right? That's a that's a uh, the same sort of thing. That's a measurement model. You're thinking how many two ninths fit into ten, right? And the answer is forty five, right? Um, Anyway, so that's all measurement model. Now, uh, one thing that I'll point out to you is that when you're doing the measurement model, if you're setting up your problem and it ends up, you end up setting it up like this. So, so you have one and one sixth of some unit of measurement, whether that measurement be tennis balls or laps or whatever, right? Well, m actually, it was miles here. So for this one, for example, we were doing one and one sixth miles divided by one third miles equals well, uh, seven halves, three and a half, right? Equals three and a half. Three and a half, uh, just as a number, right? Three and a half, you need three and a half laps, I guess you would say. But it's a different unit, right? So, so you have the same units here, and then the different unit is your answer, okay? Now that's different from the partitive model, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit. I'll, I'll go back and show you the examples, but it's different from the partitive model, because in the partitive model, what you end up setting up is you have your unit here and then your unit on the other side and the number your divisor uh, doesn't have units on it so that let me show you uh, what I mean by this so in the measurement model you're thinking how many thirds fit into one and one sixth with the part of the model you're thinking one third of what number is one and one sixth in other words one third times what number is one and one sixth and oftentimes partitive model problems lead really well to equations that look like this. One-third x equals one and one-sixth. If you set up a problem like this, then chances are what you've written is a partitive model. Okay? But you're thinking one-third of what number equals one and one-sixth. So for example, a third of a candy bar weighs one and one-sixth pounds. How much does the whole candy bar weigh? Right? So one-third of something equals one and one-sixth pounds, right? So a third of some some thing in weighed in pounds, something measured in pounds. So one third times something measured in pounds equals some number of pounds, right? Anyway, um, so uh, that's one example. Another example: if one third of a step ladder is one and one sixth feet tall, how tall is the entire ladder? Right? So a third of the step ladder is one, one and one sixth feet tall. How tall is the entire ladder? Well, so that's pretty obvious, right? It's like, so a third of it is one and one sixth feet tall. So if I want the full ladder, then I need to do one and one sixth plus one and one sixth plus one and one sixth, right? And you're going to get three and three sixths, or in other words, three and a half, right? Three and a half. Um, but uh, again, uh, uh, the sh a shorter way to do that is to just say, well, it's one and one sixth divided by a third. Okay, so one and one sixth divided by a third. So, so this is what you're setting up. You're setting up one and one sixth feet divided by divided by a third is how many feet, right? So your units are on opposite side of the equal sign. Here, there, uh, in the measurement model, the units are on the same side of the equal sign. In the part of the model, the units are on opposite sides of the equal sign. Um, so this is just another way to help you distinguish between the measurement and partitive models. And this also help us, helps us to distinguish between the partitive model and the factors and products model. This is really the only difference uh, that I can see. Really, I think of the area uh, model as just a more geometric version of the partitive model. So the area model would, would 
uh, be a question like this. The area of a rect it would be just literally like the, the area of a rectangle is one and one six square inches and one side is a third of an inch. How long is the remaining side? And I don't even have another example to show you because like that's really what the area model is asking. But um, the answer would be since it's an area your units would be square units. So what distinguishes this from the partitive model really when you bo when it boils down to it is that with the area model, your units are square units for the first uh, expression, and then linear units for the second one. And then your answer is given in linear units as well. Right? So 1 and 1 sixth, we'll say square inches, divided by 1 third inches equals 7 halves inches. Right? So, so that's really the only difference between the two models. Uh, um, I'm not really all that concerned about the area uh, model. I'm more concerned about you being able to distinguish between the measurement model and the partitive model because those two are really uh, they're, they're really pretty different ways of looking at division but they're equally valid right so on a test or a quiz I could easily ask you a question like um, write a word problem uh, that requires you to do you know one half divided by five sixths in order to solve it um, using the partitive model or something. And so in that case, if you write a problem using the measurement model, I'm going to mark you down some points because I asked for the partitive model, right? So I need you to, to understand the difference between measurement and partitive models. Um, but, but ultimately, this is what it boils down to, right? It's like with the measurement model, you're asking how many whatevers are, how many of this number fit into that number. With the partitive model, you're thinking, uh, this number times what equals that number, okay? Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, uh, well, except to just reiterate what I said sort of towards the beginning, and that is that if you struggle with this, change the fractions into whole numbers, write a word problem for the whole numbers, um, and then replace the whole numbers with fractions at the end, and it should be okay. So, so to give you just a quick example of that, like, let's say that I wanted to write a word problem for, uh, I don't know, like one and, uh, or, or like two and two thirds divided by three fourths, or something like that. No, 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 let's do two and two thirds divided by one fourth. Two and two thirds divided by one fourth. So, uh, I could make that easier. I could say, I, I could write something for 12 divided by three. Like, I could say something like, for 12 divided by 3, I would say something like uh, one glass contains three cups of water. How many glasses would it take to fill a vase that uh, whose capacity is 12 cups of water? Right, something like that. Right, so one glass contains three cups of water. How many glasses would it take to fill a vase uh, that contain or, or whose capacity is 12 cups of water? And so now, if I wanted to go back and, and change that uh, into my fraction problems, I think the fractions that I gave us was, oh, I forget, it was like 3 and 3 fourths, or 3 and 5 six divided, or something like 3 and 5 six divided by 1 quarter. But you could do the same thing now, right? You could say, you know, I have a 1 quarter measuring cup. How many of those measuring cups is it going to take to fill this vase? whose capacity is three and five six cups, right? Um, so you just uh, you, you just replace the whole numbers with the fractions that you were given. Um, anyway, uh, bonus points if you can figure out if that was a partitive or a measurement model. <laughs> uh, it would definitely be a measurement model, I think, in that case. But, but that's all I'm going to say about that. So... Uh, uh, we'll see you on Thursday uh, when we have our Zoom meeting.